Let me begin by saying why G20 is important for us. It's important for us because G20 represents 85% of the global GDP. G20 represents over 75% of the global trade. And G20 countries represent three-fourths of the global population. So you're addressing your concerns, your issues, your, uh, I would say, you know, one-to-one -one interactions into this session building activity, and you're reaching out to three-fourths of the population of the world. That is the importance of G20, which, is, which brings us to this forum, where we have a lot of, I would say, experienced speakers who will be speaking from the stage and virtually. So we have speakers on the stage and we have speakers virtually, a lot of them, three of them. So it's, it's a different, uh, I would say, adoption, technology adoption that has made this possible and I'm quite sure that uh, we will have a very successful uh, session this time. And importantly, let's say, the, what is the context? I think that's important for us to understand before we begin this session and I hand over and introduce to the panelists. It's Im important because consumer advocacy engagement in G20, we have had a hit and trial with this as Consumer International in 2017, Germany presidency. Uh, consumer International was asked to run a consumer policy summit, which was done very, very successfully and was later on also followed up <clears throat> on by publication of a report, Building a Digital cons World Consumer Can Trust, because it was all focused on digital transparency and digital effectivity. So we did participate in other conferences related to this. So one presidency, including consumer protection and uh, consumer welfare as a subject matter in the agenda, leads Consumer International to do a series of activities and it reaches the right forum, which is basically the, the group that is not only G20, but an extension because even now, we are extending that particular group and this time in 2023, African Union was introduced to G20. So we are in Kenya, welcome to G20 uh, because of, of the African Union inclusion and I'm sure that uh, the government, the Brazilian government who has taken over the presidency on 1st of December 2023 is going to have a series of meetings with the uh, African unions also. Uh, India basically included that chapter, and the follow-up is going to be done, done by the Brazilian government, in fact. So that's the background of why we are meeting, because Consumer International and Consumer Movement in particular has a lot to gain by reaching out to these countries in one, under one umbrella, under one forum, in fact, and if the subject for consumer protection can be included, then we can pass on our messages, our concerns, our solutions to the heads of states of these countries. Right now, we are talking of, of 41 countries, which is quite a lot of numbers, in fact. I will briefly now introduce you to the panelists today. Uh, we have Mariana Aureli. She is the director of Data Privacy Brazil. She's right here with me on the stage. We have Christian Castro, uh, who basically began his role as managing partner of Global Solution Initiative in September 2023. And previously, he was State Secretary for Digital Society and Consumer Policy within the German Federal Ministry of Justice and Consumer Protection. So welcome, Christian, virtually. Uh, we have Thomas Miranda. She's the Director of Collective Rights projects and policies uh, within the National Consumer Secretariat of the Ministry of Justice, Brazil. We have Igor Brito, the Institution Re uh, Relations Director of Instituto Brasilio de Defesa de Condimor 
we know him and I know, know him from IDEC. So welcome, Igor. We also have Riyad Medab sitting on the left side. He is the director of Sustainable Energy Hub, UN Development Program. And Riyad has several hats to wear, in fact, and I can't really mention everything here, but then over 20 years of experience in sustainable development, focusing on technical cooperation, policy advisory support to the government of Africa, Arab states, Asia, Pacific, and the Caribbean regions. So welcome all the panelists, and we will structure this particular program so that we have enough time to give a round of, couple of rounds of questions to the audience. I'm quite sure there'll be plenty of questions once our specialists speak about it, in fact. So as opening session, let me just say that we are coming out of India's presidency, and what are the important notes that our prime minister made on the B20 summit, on the sidelines of the G20 summits here, specifically important for the consumers, in fact. And I'll read out some of them, obviously, because of the fact I can't quote, misquote him. His emphasis on balanced global commerce and consumer-centric policies reflect a comprehensive understanding of this presidency, that was of India, of the intricate dynamics that drive today's economics of scale. That was one of the statements he made. His word of caution on viewing countries merely as market carries profound implications. We know that. It's just not marketplace. It's a place where the industry and the consumers play a role together, in fact. Uh, the short-sighted view should be awarded of exploiting the market for immediate financial gain, gain get a long-term trust of the consumers. And uh, there are many more, but then I'll, his assertion that the business generally prioritize consumer well-being can mitigate the need for stringent consumer rights advocacy and offer fresh perspective to address this lapse. He mentioned this lapse of G20 not including the consumer protection agenda. So that was the submission of the last G20 summit held in New Delhi, India. And I'll now straight away go to the panelists, in fact, so who have three minutes for the first round of questions, in fact. And I'll begin with Thomas Miranda, who's virtual uh, today. And uh, Thomas, uh, my first question to you would be a very simple one, but then very important one. What are the priorities of Brazilian presidency and how do you see consumer benefits coming out of this Brazilian presidency? Thomas, over to you. First of all, Thank you for the invitation to measure the, to participate to this debate. Uh, this very high level uh, discussion we'll have here. So speaking about uh, the Brazilian, Brazilian presidency's priority for D20, during the National uh, Consumer Secretariat, what I can say is uh, we have digital consumer at the center of digital transition and consumer at the center of the green transition. Uh, I'm sure that the Brazilian presidency uh, will develop uh, other and other uh, subjects that uh, could be related much more or much less with uh, consumers' issues. But those two subjects, green transition uh, and digital transition, would be the main uh, topics for uh, consumers' uh, defense or consumers' advocacy that we could have uh, for the Brazilian presidency and G20. Um, I would like to, to give you a very quick overview on what, what we have been done, doing uh, since we got here with the change of administration in Brazil in uh, 2023 and say that uh, Senacon, the National Consumer Secretary, Secretariat of, of Brazil, uh, is following these two points, or especially the digital transition, uh, discussing the issue of the big techs and the discussion about the responsibility and liability of digital platforms in relation to fraudulent content that circulates on, the on their timelines. 
Uh, I'm sure we'll have much more time to develop during this panel, uh, but I would like already to give you this uh, this overview because uh, we do not have, for example, a DSA or DMA uh, uh, laws uh, or regulations uh, like Europe, for example. And but since the consumer code here provides for a uh, a responsibility, a, solid, a solidarity uh, on the responsibility and liability for providers. We have an interpretation that, that, that allows Senacom and the consumer defense bodies to act and to enforce uh, and investigate the platform, the digital platforms, when they let fraudulent content circulate on their timelines and if it causes damage to the consumers, they can use the enforcement powers to uh, avoid this. Uh, this would be the main issue, and, and it calls for disinformation, uh, scams, uh, fraudulent consumers that could cause dam uh, financial damage, psycho damage, and etc. I don't. I won't spend more more than three minutes on there right now, but we can talk more uh, later in this panel. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, wonderful hearing about the good things that we expect to happen from the Brazilian presidency. In fact, over to you, Igor, in fact, and uh, continuing with what Thomas just mentioned, in fact, so how do you, how can you actually include the consumer advocacy movement engagements effectively uh, based in Brazil uh, so that this is an, not only a an discussion agenda, but also an anticipated, expected outcome agenda. Over to you, Igor. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ashina, and good afternoon, everyone. Well, first of all, it's a real honor to, to be part of the session, even though I, I could be with you in person. But, well, speaking about our involvement as consumers organization in the G20, we need to start urging the Brazilian government to organize or to sponsor a consumer summit during the 2024 meetings in Brazil. Uh, uh, the Brazilian government recently announced that the G20 meetings will take place in, in, I think, in 13 cities across all the country in Brazil to encourage more participation from civil society leaders. And, and we have the, the, the pleasure to have uh, Thomas with us uh, here representing the National Consumer Secretariat. And I believe that we at Consumers International should uh, suggest to the Brazilian government the inclusion of a consumer summit, as, as you said, actually in, in other, in other, uh, in the past years, we have it in other uh, G20 meetings uh, sponsored by the government, the Brazilian government, with the particip participation of consumer defense authorities and also uh, us from the Consumers Association from various member countries during the agenda of meetings hosted by, by, by Brazil. And, and furthermore, as, as we consider the three main uh, subjects mentioned by, by our President Lula as the government priorities for G20, which is energy transition, the uh, combating hunger and addressing the climate crisis, uh, it seems that we may have uh, an opportunity to advocate for the approval of new consumer rights related with that, especially for the countries of the global south, as the right of to choose affordable and, and clean energy sources, uh, reduce the use of pesticides. This is a big problem here in our region. And they also to adopt the, the WHO recommendation for selecting healthy and non-ultra-processed food and to promote a robust agenda for sustainable production and consumption, including the ban on plastic. And, and, and I'm aware that topics related to digital governments as, as Thomas said, will be on the agenda. Uh, uh, and, and however, we at DEC believe that consumer interests will continue to be on the, the, the periphery of the G20 meetings. If we not have uh, a specific space to discuss the, the, 
the interest and the right of, of consumers uh, without receiving due attention. If you need, if, if you do have an official and specific space for consumer on D20, we think we have uh, more opportunities to advance in, in consumer's agenda. And, and therefore, I, I bring another suggestion that our organization, uh, you need once again to advocate for the creation of a consumer engagement group within the G20 framework. We need to draw on the example of Brazil, which is a country where consumer protection is clearly carried out by a large set of federal, state, and municipal public bodies, in addition to the role of, of our, 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 our work as consumer associations. And, and, and these interests of the consumers are not fully represented in civil society engagement group, groups such as C20, and neither exclusively by government representative at the, the, the shepherd track. This is the ideal opportunity for Brazil to recommend the creation of an official, exclusive, and permanent space for the consumer's interest, at least for the future editions of G20, uh, as in South Africa, uh, if we don't get the specific space in Brazil. Thank, Thank you, Igor. Uh, a lot of hopes you have raised, in fact, in terms of participative uh, consumer movements as far as uh, the Brazil presidency is concerned. We are very hopeful that uh, this uh, continued participation of consumer organizations in the deliberations is very, very important, in fact. And uh, over to you now, Riyadh, in fact. And uh, my first question to you would be, uh, the African Union has now joined uh, G20 officially in 2023. Uh, what do you expect a paradigm shift in terms of uh, G20 presidency of uh, Brazil in uh, developing of, for developing countries? Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm gonna jump on what was said by, by my predecessor. Um, when something very important, we are moving from what Prime Minister Modi said, the consumer-centric policies, and now we are moving to a social summit in Brazil. This is very important. And the motto of the Brazilian presidency is building a just world and a sustainable planet. The just, it is the most important word here regarding the consumers. And here, having Africa joining the African Union, it is for me a, tur a turning point for providing Africa a possibility to have a real voice in economic decisions. And also, it is a huge opportunity that we need to translate into, into actions. Because it's not just being a member, is how do you translate it into actions? But the fact that bringing Africa is bringing 55 countries, it is a combined GDP of $3 trillion. It is 1.3 billion people. It is very important. Those numbers are very important. It is also the largest free trade zone. It will increase visibility, influence, and a voice. And a voice here, what is interesting in African Union is you have a civil society department, which is the bridge between the government and the civil society. It has already an institutionalized system. And that African Union, we bring it at the G20. But the work of the G20 is a work of a troika. There is a presidency of Brazil, there is the, the previous uh, president, but there is the future president, which is South Africa. And for me, the, the voice here is, is represented by uh, the social, the civil society organization, and it will represent here the engagement that needs to be inclusive and transparent for the African Union.
Thank you. Thank you, Riyadh. I think uh, a lot of hopes again uh, pinned on this uh, merger of African Union and uh, you mentioned some of the great paradigm shifts, in fact, of economic transition, social transitions. We look forward to them. Uh, Mariana, over to you now. And uh, what do you think will be uh, the digital economy evolving out of this summit in Brazil, which will interest be of interest and concerns to consumers? Thank you very much. I think um, one way to start the conversation about the um, evolution of the digital economy conversation within G20 and next year's G20 specifically is to mention the priorities of the digital economy uh, working group that have been um, published. And the first one is connectivity. And of course, we're talking about meaningful con connectivity. It's important to remember that in Brazil, even though the country is highly connected, only about a third of the connected population could be said to have meaningful connectivity in terms of quality, in terms of access to devices, in, ter in terms of um, access to data. Uh, also, the second one is digital government, and of course, that is very much related to uh, the discussion on digital public infrastructure and the consensus that was reached and pushed by the Indian presidency, but also with a focus uh, intentional here on digital government. Um, the third one is information integrity, and I think that's very important because um, Brazil has been um, very vocal about including discussions on platform regulation and disinformation in this particular forum as well, but that also has to do with consumers, and it has been mentioned already uh, how the lack of information integrity leads to scams and fraud and how uh, platformization and digital services are also, um, and the discussion on regulation is also highly important for consumers because this is where they are uh, exercising their uh, consumption. And the fourth is artificial intelligence, and this is also something that we know have, uh, has um, benefits to be reaped, but we are already seeing how malicious uses of artificial intelligence contribute to the problem of information integrity and are already impacting uh, consumers. So I think I would say that um, the thing with digital is that it, it, it is sometimes framed as something separate, um, and the challenge here, I think, is um, while, while, of course, I agree that it is important to have like a specific forum to discuss consumer um, protection, also to um, con connect all of those priorities in terms of how they matter to consumers and how they are related to each other. Uh, and two of them are already framed in terms of rights, and that's interesting because you have connectivity, access, and you have the issue of information integrity that is related to the right to information. So I think this is highly connected to what Consumers International has already been uh, pushing in terms of uh, the rights of consumers and how they have to uh, be um, discussed in all of these uh, priorities. And I would say that this is maybe a good starting point to connect the digital with um, consumers' protection in the G20. Thank, Thank you, Mariano. I think uh, it's important uh, what you said rightly, that uh, digital connectivity is something which we are all looking forward to as evolving subject, and uh, basically we should make some roads uh, from this uh, Brazilian and South African uh, presidency. Uh, Christian, uh, over to you now. I'm very sad to hear that uh, you couldn't join us because of your allergy to yellow fever vaccination. However, we are very glad to have you on the virtual thing. So uh, my question to you is, uh, what issues uh, do you think uh, consumer advocates should bring to the table of uh, the Brazilian presidency of G20, which should be actually uh, in line with uh, the thoughts that uh, Brazil has already expressed their opinion about where they want this presidency to lead to, in fact. So as consumer advocates, what do you think our role should be? 
Christian. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ashim. And uh, I'm very, very sad uh, not being here in presence and uh, to do all these interesting talks also on, on the side. So, um, okay, it is as it is, and maybe we have other opportunities to meet. Uh, there are enough places which are very safe for me personally. I'm sure it's very safe for all of you there. So, uh, first of all, uh, let me mention, in fact, uh, the Consumer International Conference, and you also alluded to that, and the Global Solutions Initiatives are twins. We are both founded uh, 2017 uh, by the German G20 presidency, and I think this is, for me, always a good omen uh, for a very good relationship. So, um, congrats to this, to this great uh, conference. So, what are the issues? So, of course, I will quickly walk through, some have already been mentioned. Of course, digital and AI is something which is so important for empowerment of the global civil society and what has been said, I completely support, that's it. Uh, the second issue, which I think for consumers is also a bit on the forefront due to the actual developments, uh, this is about global value chains and the whole issue of trade. So we will have less just in time, less efficiency, it will be less cheap. On the other hand, we have to take care of the safety of a value chain, sustainability, security, reliability and trust, fair pricing and no corruption. And I think this is also very, very important uh, issues for the consumers and we have to watch what's happening in this geoeconomics uh, very closely. This then is related to a third group, which is uh, the global commons. And this is about uh, what is especially important for the global south, climate, water, food, health, uh, water, energy. So uh, this is also issues we clearly have to watch. Uh, this has all to be underpinned, and this is also something which is also relevant, uh, I think, for, for all the consumers, how we really come forward with the financing of the Sustainable Development Goals. There was a very strong African voice at the Paris Peace Conference lately, and I hope there will be more of that and from all the global south, and that would be very, very relevant. Then, of course, uh, where we have the problem that the global governance, which was founded uh, in the middle of the last century, is really running out in a way. So it is not a full and fair representation for the global society, and this has to be amended, and therefore there is this big issue also reforming the global governance and reshaping it, and this is so important also for consumer issues. I'm very, I'm, I'm very, very serious about that. So, but as Consumer International for me is the biggest and cross-cutting engagement group at all, I think she should play a very, very important role in this reform process on top of all the issues. So, and this is last but not least, uh, what we are doing with the Global Solutions Summit. Uh, this is a gathering, of course, of the T20, G20, and we're very happy about the colleagues from Brazil who already spoke up, and we have a very good contact, and uh, we have a conference in May. Uh, invitations will come out, and this is then the T20 group, but also the other engagement groups. And I very much count on a strong representation uh, from Consumer International uh, to really get these huge new tasks done. And uh, thank you so much, Ashton. Thank you, Christian, uh, for uh, pointing out. And I think uh, it's important for all, all of us to remember that uh, you were instrumental in the 2017 success of Consumer International getting a uh, a key role to lead the way forward uh, under uh, the, the German presidency. We'll come back to that, uh, but then uh, Thomas, uh, taking cue from what Christian just mentioned, in fact, uh, how do you think that the consumer issues can be integrated by consumer international members? Consumer international can play probably a pivotal role in shaping things from now onwards, the moment uh, you have taken up the presidency, and that involvement of consumer organizations there is really heartening, in fact. So what would you suggest uh, Consumer International be doing with their members to support your cause there uh, and bring the global best practices? Thomas? Thank you. 
Thomas, we can't hear you. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, to, to, to answer your question, I'd like to, to give the audience an explanation on how the National Consumer Protection System works in Brazil. Uh, the, the, the National Consumer Protection System brings together uh, public bodies, bodies uh, prosecutor's office, public defenders, and civil consumer protection entities, which act in an articulated and integrated manner with the National Consumer Secretariat, SENACOM. And the system uh, meets quarterly to jointly analyze and ch uh, the challenges faced by consumers and to formulate actions and strategies, such as joint inspections, harmonization of understanding, and development of public consumer protection and defense policies. So the bodies have like concurrent competence and act in a complementary manner to receive complaints, investigate uh, irregularities, and promote consumer protection and defense, raise awareness of consumer protection. So the PROCONs are the state and municipal consumer protection and defense bodies created specifically for the public purpose with powers within the scope of their jurisdiction to exercise the duties established by the Consumer Defense Code. They are therefore body, bodies to, that operate at the local level, directly serving consumers and monitoring the local consumers' market, playing a fundamental role in implementing the national consumer protection policy. The public prosecutor's office and the public defender's office within the scope of their duties also act in protection and defense of consumers and in construction of the national consumer relation policy. The public prosecutor's office in accordance with uh, its constitutional co competence, in addition to monitoring and ap the application of the law, launches investigations and proposes collective actions. And the public defender's office, in addition to proposing actions, defends the interests of the unassisted, promoting agreement and conciliations. And the civil entities play a very, very important role in consumer protection and defense. They represent the organized groups of citizens of duly relation with a statutory function of consumer protect defense. And the role of the National Consumer Secretary is the, the Secretariat is legally responsible for coordinating the system and focused on analyzing issues that have national repercussion and general interest, in addition to planning and preparing, coordinating, and executing the, executing the national consumer protection policy. Uh, with that said, the, the civil entities like uh, EDEC, uh, from which Igor uh, uh, come from, and Consumers International, are very important to provoke us, to provoke the government, to provoke national, the National Consumer Secretariat, uh, and, 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 and to, to participate and work together with us uh, with, in our actions, but also to provide sponsorship in, uh, for, uh, within our scope, of course, for their participation and their enforcement of uh, consumer defense uh, issues. So, as I said, uh, we have uh, a main focus right now on the digital agenda and the liability of digital platforms and fraudulent content that circulates. Uh, for example, we have public programs to uh, regarding over indebtedness, uh, and the and Brazilian government is announcing a program to renegotiate debits of consumers, and we are already seeing uh, fraudulent content regarding this program. Uh, which leads consumers and users of digital platforms to fraudulent websites which uh, that says come here and we're going to re renegotiate your debits and the, and this uh, sponsored content within the, the digital platforms are available to any user to any consumer uh, that can click and go to a fraudulent site website thinking they will re renegotiate their debits and actually it's it's just uh, it's just a fraud uh, I, I'm giving one example on how uh, how how the civil society can help us uh, with their expertise and and their uh, tools working together with us monitoring uh, providing us uh, with uh, uh, I, new, new ideas of, on how to address these issues, for example, because the enforcement is on us. 
but the idea on, on how to develop a policy for this issue can come from civil society and is much appreciated and expected from us to work together with civil society in this field. Oh, thank you, almost wonderful. Uh, Igor, uh, my question to you would be, we all know the vigorous role that IDEC plays in consumer issues and uh, we are followers in uh, Southeast Asia of IDEC policies, uh, which actually, in terms of definitions, in terms of consumer orientations, are very important. So how many IDECs will you require to support you in the mission of getting consumer agenda included? Well, I think, good question. We need a lot of support. Uh, uh, first of all, I think that we have uh, a problem in Brazil. We have, we have a very strong public system of consumer protection, but we still uh, don't have uh, a strong uh, environment of consumer movement. We have IDEC and another few civil uh, organization of consumers trying to put the consumer agenda in the public decision, but uh, it's not enough. So I think that we, 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 we need the support of the, of the consumers association of all over the world, especially on the G20, especially on the next year. That's because we, we, we don't have uh, uh, a huge experience of participating in international conference and international forums. And, and, but you have, uh, we, we have a lot of partners around the world that have a, a good experience of how we can advocate for consumers' interest in international forums. So uh, that's why I said we we really need that to unit our our our, our thinking, our efforts to ask to the Brazilian government to support a consumer summit. That so you all from um, international consumer representations could be here in Brazil in the next year, helping us to put the consumer interest uh, uh, on the agenda. Especially when we think the uh, South, the, the Global South agenda of consumer protection, which is very different than in other countries. Thank you, uh, Igor. And regard to you, uh, I'll be very specific uh, in the interest of time. Uh, what uh, you've carried so much of experience, so what uh, you think are the developing countries' expectations from G20. Let's be specific. Let's say, take an example of the energy sector, for example. Okay, thank you very much. If we go back to the situation in Africa, you have more than 600 million people without access to electricity. 970 million people without access to clean cooking. That real effort need to be made now on the supply side, but of course, on the demand side, reflecting the reality, the priority of the consumers. When you see Africa, it has around 60% of the world renewable energy. It has 30% of all the mineral which are necessary for new renewable energy. Take just Congo. Congo alone has half of the world cobalt which are necessary for the um, battery. What can we do with the fact that Africa is now part of the G20? Is increasing the partnership with the members of the G20 for realizing a just energy transition reflecting the reality of the demand and of the consumers. It means addressing the misalignment between the energy social needs, and financial flows. That is a real opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Riyad. Uh, <clears throat> Mariana, uh, let's say specifically you are attached to a particular subject which is of great concern today, in fact. So what unique role uh, can consumer advocates play after the sessions that you've attended, in fact, in enhancing the capacity building that you want consumer advocates globally to do 
based on your inclusion in the discussions in for the Brazilian uh, G20. Thank you. Um, coming from uh, digital rights uh, organizations that started out as focusing on data protection mostly, and is part of a larger coalition of organizations that call themselves digital rights organizations. I think there is in Brazil, and Igor can speak of that too, um, many synergies between the consumers uh, movement and digital rights organizations that have um, rallied around um, legislation uh, concerning um, rights in the internet, concerning data protection, concerning AI now, this is an ongoing process, platform regulation. Um, so there is, I think, um, some um, experience of integrating those issues, but also strategies, because of course consumer, uh, consumers' uh, movements and um, have specific advocacy strategies and a different history from what we call like digital rights movements, and but they are very much connected. And I think Brazil has this a recent history and IDAC is very uh, important. I've been saying how IDAC is one of our biggest partners in digital issues as well, uh, but also bringing the experience from the other areas that it um, has experience on in terms of consumer protection. So I think this is something that can be uh, leveraged and can be uh, used when we were, we were talking about integrating the digital agenda and making it uh, more consumer-centric and uh, understanding how those four priorities that I mentioned um, also uh, have to do with what consumers uh, need and want. Uh, so I would say, and being here, not being a consumer um, protection ad advocate, but coming from a different but related field, I think there is uh, much to be advanced in terms of this synergy, and Brazil has this recent experience, and I think this is gonna be instrumental for G20 as well. Thank you, uh, Christian. Basically, um, uh, the, very briefly, we had a great success in the Global Solution Summits that uh, basically pushed our agenda. And uh, can, is it repeatable? Can we do it again? Is it possible during Brazilian or South African presidency? And if yes, then what needs to be done from now onwards? Um, no, I think uh, there is always a good chance and I think uh, as I have met some Brazilian colleagues and I think they are very engaged and they are very on top of the subjects, so I'm, I'm, I'm rather sure uh, that this uh, will be a, a great uh, G20 presidency and of course uh, we will participate, so we will also be part of the T T20 and uh, uh, we will try also to work from this angle and we would also love uh, to use the Global Solution Summit 6th and 7th of May uh, also to drive uh, also the Brazilian agenda as, as possible. Uh, so I think that everything possible, we will have uh, probably the Sherpas there and um, the subjects are well known, we discussed them here for, for quite a while. And to have this multi-stakeholder dialogue, uh, and I think this is our big asset, that it's not just a business conference, it's not just um, <clears throat> a science conference, it's with civil society and uh, a lot of Global South. And uh, as said, I think we need a reorganization of the global governance. We need to cooperate wherever it's possible without any uh, any other hindrance or every has get together and uh, so we would try to have Consumer International as a very major partner and input giver uh, into that conference. So I'm, I'm very hopefully about that. Thank you, thank you so much. In fact, uh, I think uh, we are running a slightly behind schedule, but never mind. Uh, the floor is now open for questions and uh, somebody will hand over the mics to you. Uh, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Oliver. Please, uh, please be brief, we are behind time. Uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, especially C20 Life uh, platform uh, has recommended many things on sustainable agriculture, sustainable clothing and so on. So to take those uh, recommendation forward in, in G21, is CI making some concrete plan as a bridge 
or any other platform is making such a bridging activity? So when you ask uh, about what CI is doing about it, uh, I don't think the floor can answer that. In fact, you have to ask CI. But then uh, very obviously work is in progress on that particular angle. Uh, next, please. Thanks, Hashim. Uh, I see the Brazilian presidency as a very big potential in achieving uh, this because India, the discussion started, then Brazil and South Africa, the IPSA, you know, three years continuously uh, dealing with it. I think in India we could not achieve this because we started the discussions of inclusion of consumer protection at a later stage, uh, I think. But uh, being said that, we need to do the homework, you know. We have to be clear when we are saying that we want to include consumer protection. What are the issues that, you know, what are the key hours and we need to prioritize? Now itself I am confused whether it is digital rights, whether it is energy, whether it is sustainable consumption. What is that we are going to ask G20 to include? So we have to be clear and include this uh, in we need to prioritize. And with regard to the CI experiment, Ashim had mentioned about the 2017 German presidency. I was part of the CI expert group in the run-up to the, the Korean presidency in 2012. That time after the uh, double dip uh, digital uh, uh, repression, we were focusing on digital financial uh, protection. And first time in the Seoul declaration, we succeeded in getting that. But two years uh, CI had worked. I was a number of times in the CI office in, in uh, London in the work up to that. And a brief suggestion also, writing to all the consumer organizations in the G20s to take the lead, meeting with the Sherpas, and if it is financial related, then involving the central bank. That time we have done and including in even the networks like FinconNet, things like that. So once the issues are prioritized, the consumer organizations in each of the G20 countries need to take the need, get in touch with the Sherpas and the concerned team who will be going to attend, and we need to start the homework now itself and do the groundwork. Otherwise, just on the eve of the, the summit, if we talk about that, we are not going. And I also see that Brazil, the enabling environment is there, consumer organization like ADEC, uh, you know, presents in Brazil and many other activists and civil society uh, enabling environment as a big uh, pro uh, potential. I, I think CI should start working on this through the member organization now itself. Thanks. Thank Ashim. you. Thank you, George. Uh, very good summarization and way forward. Riyad, do you would like to react, react to this? One, one element which is very important and which I mentioned and also our predecessor who are in uh, Brazil is the fact this is the first time that uh, a presidency announced a social summit. And in, for preparing the social summit, they put in place several working groups, and one of them is on the civil society. I think I fully agree with you. This is the right moment. It's now that we can do it, and we can do it in a concrete way. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, hi, I'm Javier Ruiz. I'm from the digital uh, team in Consumers International, so I would be very, very keen to follow up with the members in the discussion. But I just wanted to stress uh, two points. One, why um, we need a consumer space at the G20, which is that there is a lot of overlap with the T20, the think tanks, and the civil society space. But the G20 is unique in connecting the G7 with the other countries, and I think the consumer space is precisely one of those spaces where it's not civil society <laughs> development organization from another country helping an organization in the South, but actually organizations from North and South working together as equals and having developing a common agenda, as we say, with different priorities, but still, you know, part of a single whole. And that is a very unique contribution that we are finding. And this space not only needs to be created for Brazil, but it needs to be permanent because we cannot spend the first six months of the year discussing and putting all our energies on whether we can actually participate. Because the process that our colleague was saying there that we should be doing now, talking to the Sherpas, mobilizing the members, at the moment the process is, can we talk? Can we be there? Is this year going to be a consumer year? Or is it going to be like the year where there were no consumers? Yeah. yeah, so I think that it's very important that we have the consumer space, and not only that, but that we actually try to make sure that it happens this year and the year after, so we don't have to start from scratch every year. Thomas, you. Uh, would you like to react to this? 
Thomas, if you heard the question or the suggestion, uh, any reaction from your side? Uh, we are taking in consideration. Let's try and answer the, all the questions. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. We are taking in consideration. Your voice is broken. Never mind, Thomas. Thank you very much, uh, Christian. Uh, you would like to react to this? Uh, oh yes, of course. I 100% I agree. And. Uh, as said, so as far as we can create opportunities, we would very much like to support, to help uh, wherever it's possible. And as the Brazilian colleagues already induced, uh, let's make a real joint effort. As said, this is the biggest cross-cutting engagement group we have, uh, and it is connected to so many important issues which were mentioned here today. That's that's without any other uh, any other opportunity. We should use this one. If I may, uh, my name is Arnaud Izaguerri and I work for the UN Conference on Trade and Development. We've been privileged enough to participate, support, and sometimes assist as secretariat of the G20 Consumer Summit since Germany and Consumers International decided to have the first in uh, Germany, then Argentina, then in Japan and Italy. But since Italy, the world is now in dire need of cooperation and solidarity. Consumers are facing cascading crisis in the wake of the COVID pandemic with the global reach of wars in Ukraine and Gaza, with the climate change crisis and the triple planetary crisis. So the only thing I want to say is we at UNCTAD were ready to support the Brazilian government in whichever decision it intends to take regarding the consumer summit, but we're also ready to support, and I hope all of us are, to participate in all G20 means and lines of work that we can make the consumer voice be heard. And uh, it's never uh, possible to overstate the importance of these summits in shaping global dialogues and also influencing other institutions. And such is the case of UNCTAD as the focal point on consumer protection that has greatly benefit from consensus building at the G20 in previous occasions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I think these voices of support comes as a great consolation for us that we are moving in the right direction. Uh, any other questions? Uh, yeah. uh, good afternoon. My, my name is John Zintaukira from Zua Energy in Malawi. Um, just a quick reaction, maybe a, a question. How do, do we understand in terms of what is, what do we think is the role of end user subsidies in actually achieving all this? Because I'm asking this because, again, for I think from the topics that needs to be prioritized, uh, it's not there. But I think if we want uh, consumers to really switch towards uh, green consumption and these kind of things, uh, there are some groups that, you know, for example, if you, uh, the gentleman from UNDP, I think, mentioned that uh, uh, cooking is a problem in Africa. So if you want someone to switch from using fuel wood to using, uh, say, uh, LPG or biogas, it's a huge investment, so uh, which cannot be achieved without end user subsidies. So, and but also that would also be, uh, I think, providing or extending uh, these kind of subsidies. It's also uh, a way to protect consumers from, you know, from uh, uh, people who just claim that their technology is going to work, and uh, people invest in these things, but then they end up not working. So, what is the role? Or what do we think is the role of subsidies to actually ensure? that customers are protected when adopting these new technologies. Thank you. Thank you for your suggestions. Well noted, sir. Thank you. Uh, somebody this side? Yeah. Uh, thank you. My name is Liz Orembo from Research ICT Africa. And uh, we are part of civil society group, uh, part of uh, uh, Brazilian civil society and others uh, in the South America, Asia, and Africa trying to... Can you to speak a little louder, please? Or close them? Can you hear me now? <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so we are, we are convening as civil society so that we, we, we ensure that uh, the, the IBSA leadership in the G20 is not just country priorities, but global south priorities. But more importantly is how the digital agenda, issues pertaining to meaningful connectivity, issues pertaining to uh, data governance and power within uh, uh, the private sector and even governments are going to be addressed in this new global 
order of, uh, of, of digital society. So my direct question is, um, how can civil society together with the countries ensure the continuity in agenda of uh, the G G20 within the IBSA leadership itself as their leadership rotates uh, within uh, to ensure that some of these pertinent agendas are not dropped out as emerging issues also come up? Thank you. Uh, Christian, if you had uh, a, a good question, the answer Yes, I can. I can, can you I can take, answer this question to her? I can. T I can try. Uh, of course, there is a big issue that we have this discontinuation, and uh, of course, uh, this is something we really have to look after, uh, because I think, and this means, of course, that the oncoming G20 presidencies, in a way, must work together. In the past, we have sometimes seen that they move to very different uh, new topics, and maybe. There's a kind of a line of VIP topics which could be defined within the G20, focusing again G21, Africa, uh, to keep this going. I agree with, with the question uh, that there is sometimes a disruption, and uh, this is something we also have to look at when we do a new mode uh, for the G20. Uh, that's, that's rather important, I agree. We're running out of time, so if we can have a very, very quick intervention, and then we'll please have to wrap up. Please be brief. Hello. Very briefly, please. Very brief. OK, thank you. Uh, I will address just one, since I'm supposed to be brief. Digital consumer protection is a priority issue that should be addressed. Um, all countries, or many countries, are trying to go into digital consumer protection in different ways, including financial services. but. Without uh, consumer education, without financial literacy, they cannot do that successfully. So they should do uh, digital consumer protection in all its ramifications. Because it's not just saying, oh, we want to operate a cashless policy, we, can't, we want to do this. But you go to the bank, you see consumers trying to tell, telling strangers to fill forms for them, yet they are trying to uh, go into uh, digital finance. Somebody will put your... Uh, your PIN number and all that. So consumer education, which is also tied to that. But the main thing is digital consumer protection because it has a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, aspects. And all the aspects, we even address all these things we're talking about. Thank you. Point well taken and well accepted, in fact. And uh, we're working for this particular cause only. Any other question quickly, the last one? There, I just wanted to uh, actually endorse that digital consumer protection. We have already endorsed that. Yeah, no, so I, I'm, I, I actually also was going to ask for more details on the digital e-government engaging and acknowledging the brilliance of the Indian G20 and the focus on the DPI initiative and completely aligned with trying to figure out how to bring in consumers into the work. And um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So we end the session here uh, with a big thank you to all the panelists uh, in the room and uh, on the screen. It was a wonderful session. A round of claps, in fact. Thank you to the audience who were here and who asked questions. We were really very, very glad that most of you took a deep interest because this is a long haul subject. And we're going to have many more sessions like this. Thank you. We end the session here. Thank you so much.